music is not like a uh, track and field event. And you don't have to be the fastest to be great. If you happen to be fast, fine. But either way, it comes down to the music. And drumming comes down to time and groove and, and this, your ear. You know, I think it's I think it's like it, it blows me away when I hear a, a great drummer play something really fast and incredible. You know, but <clears throat> if it's not at the right musical moment that that happens, I you know it's not great. It's the worst. My favorite drummers include guys with a lot of technique and guys without a lot of technique. And so I, th I think I just like to give. I'm hoping to maybe be able to toss something out that they can take home with them and inspire them to, to be better. Please welcome Mr. Billy Ward. are not just rhythmic instruments, I think they are melodic. I think you can support a song harmonically by choosing the right crash cymbal when you're in rehearsal or when you're running a thing down, running a song down before recording. Listen to the pitch of your instruments and see which tom you want to go to on the fill. Make your ears tell you where you want to go instead of your hands. Teach your hands to obey your ears. What we're going to do right now, I want to demonstrate this kind of weird drum set with this incredibly manly uh, bass drum in front. 
Uh, it's called a woofer. It sits in front of a normal bass drum. Uh, it's a 28-inch woofer, and it's sitting in front of a 12 by 20 bass drum. I'm going to play a groove, and this is kind of a boomy room, but I'm going to ask Garrison from DW to come and move the woofer drum away from the kit. You'll hear how groovy the tw uh, 12 by 20 sounds by itself, but you'll also hear what the woofer does to the sound. Okay? I'm just going to play a groove for a sec. Did you hear a difference? Up here, like, you can really feel the difference. It comes up your foot like the... Oh. Okay, and I'd like to talk about technique now, if you don't mind. You know, there's, there's a lot of different kinds of technique. There's speed and endurance, and that's the obvious kind. But let me just... Where do I go? Let's try... I'll call it... Let's call it agility. And that is the technique of, like I said before, teaching your hands to obey your ears. Let's say you just want to use a sound. Um, I've spent so much time tuning drums, you know, and when you tune drums, you, you, you're just kind of doing stuff like this, you know? Well, that led to me getting into just how groovy drums sound with your hands. And let me just show you one style of agility. These are uh, marakitas. They're like the eggs you get in Europe um, for breakfast, but they're colored like Easter eggs. And I'm going to put one or two in my shoe, <laughs> because I can. It's a nice uh, visual effect. And I'm going to show you a different type of groove that you don't get out of a book. OK, here we go. So you're in a band and you can do that. And you're playing at the Holiday Inn or you're in the studio and the rhythm section doesn't enter until the second verse. Well, maybe... Bum, 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 bum. Let's say the key is, a, is bum, bum, bum. You choose to be a percussionist till the band enters. So you're, the song's a ballad and you're just, it's real delicate acoustic guitar vocalist. You're just going to go... Everybody's already turned around and looked at you smiling because they're so into the genius thing that you are. <laughs> okay, and then you look down and you go, as I'm doing at this moment, and you go, my snare's off. And you gotta somehow get it on. Agility. And then you gotta get your sticks. Three, four. And then you're in the song. And that's like really, really fun. OK, some more groovy stuff. I just got these this morning from Rhythm Tech, cocktail shakers. First thing I did was sort of one of these.
first of all, there's, there's time, period. Time, 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 time. There's time and then there's time. And you've got to have some time. You've got to understand some time. And the hints I have for that, because then you can groove. Now, there is some t ways and musics where you can groove without time, like free jazz, for instance. But in popular music, or anything that probably most of us in this room today are listening to, it's about time, and then it's about groove. It's about time, time, time. I wish I could just say it for the millennium. Uh, now, here's what I have to say about time. James Taylor has a song called The Secret of Life is Enjoying the Passage of Time. And that is it. You have to love the space between your notes more than you love what you're playing. That's the psychological aspect of it. If you're playing a fill that goes da, ba, da, da, ba, zu, za, if you're there, then you'd better just love and cherish every moment in between those notes. Secondly, make sure your drum set is your ally. This has to do within the studio as well. Set up your drum set so that when I'm sitting here, I know this kit may look weird. Maybe I have an odd body. I don't know or care, but here's the deal. Hi-hat, watch my arm from the elbow up. I don't have to go in or out. You don't set your drums up like they are in the picture in the catalog. And that way you can go. You can get around and it's easy. It's just like, that's all I'm doing, moving my, you know, you just keep your drum set an ally. Same for the cymbals, no extra reaches, none. Finally, um, you need to take like physical snapshots of your body when things feel good. If you're playing a groove and you're hitting that zone where you just go, oh, this is great. When that happens to you, notice, look down at your hand on the backbeat and say, how high am I raising my stick? How do I feel? Where am I sitting? What is my posture? You have to remember that, and you have to do it consistently. If you do that consistently, I do that consistently. I do a thing. Um, it's hard to do with a microphone. I do a thing where I, I raise my, I kind of do this like, kind of cranking thing with my, <laughs> with my snare drum, with my backbeat. Like it's, it's like this. I have a thing, I have a mechanism, and you have to be a mechanism. There's a certain mechanical, so you just want all these things to be your allies. And then, if you really love the space between the notes, you're going to have time. As to groove, that's an aesthetic, and it's like kind of hard to get into. But that's something that I think we each have to travel independently. One thing I do recommend is listen to non-drummers, be inspired by non-drummers. Get inside the head of your favorite, whatever, whether it be Jimi Hendrix or John Coltrane or, or uh, Spike Lee or whatever. I mean, I don't care. You know, non-musicians. You can get an aesthetic. I get my wife is a painter, an artist, and I, I get there's a there's a in art there's this Albers th third color theory. I'm probably getting it wrong, but where if you see any two colors, your eye will fill in a third color. Well, that's true in groove. You know, that's true in groove. You can be playing. Like, like, I did a track on Robbie Robertson's record, and the big fill in this song, it's like called Hold Back the Dawn. I use these things, these are Vic Firth little shaker things, and I, it's like a. And the big fill is like after the bridge. So I showed the beginning big, and I just kind of snuck away like a thief in the night and let the ear, the ear finish the fill. Your ears finish that drum fill. And, you know, there's things like that you can get into when you start talking about groove. I'd like to bring out John Pousset Dart. John Pousset Dart had a band called the Pousset, Pousset Dart Band, oddly enough. In the 70s, they made four great records. Every town I 
carry you down this lonely road Trust your heart, it's always right Remember you got shelf life I found out I got shelf life Billy Ward for inviting me here. You guys are a wonderful crowd. Thank you.